Hello and welcome to the 51st video in this beginner series programming in C. So in this video we're going to, it'll only be a quick video because it's a very simple topic, but we're going to look at command line arguments because it's something that when you first come across it can look very strange and more often than not when you see other people's uh, C programs they have inside the brackets of main whereas previously we had nothing here they have these two arguments and certainly when I first started programming in C they looked a little bit cryptic and I was always wondering what the hell they were particularly as when you read the letters they don't seem to be very uh, understandable instantly but actually what they would stand for really the ARGC just simply stands for argument count and ARGV then stands for the argument value and you can probably already work out what that then means is the first integer here as an argument when the program starts will say how many arguments have been sent to the program if you're not sure what arguments are then we'll see shortly when we run an example program in the terminal and this argument count includes as an argument the execution command for the program itself so say I had a program called I don't know calculate bottles and I ran it by typing calculate bottles into the console with nothing else then there would be one argument and this argument would be calculate bottles so the values of these arguments are stored as strings or arrays or sets of characters and this second argument here is a pointer to an array which will contain all of those strings so without further ado let's just Mate, a very simple program just to demonstrate this and like I said it's probably already blindingly obvious how this all works so you could probably press stop now but if it's not then we'll just have a a quick look so main and the first thing we'll do is we'll have a look at how many arguments we have so we'll say program has in fact we won't do that we'll just put argc so that we're less confused and then a colon and the value a d like so and then just argc. So this will tell us how many arguments were submitted to the program. And now what we can do then is we can loop through the arguments and I'll just type an index as usual for the loop and then we can print those arguments out to screen. So we'll say index equals naught. And by the way I have a new keyboard so the typing might be even worse than usual. Uh, index is less than our argument count and then plus plus index will always have at least one argument so I'll just make now then a printf and let's print our first argument so we'll say that we have and we're, remember we're printing the arguments from this array here so to make things really clear let's type main our argument and now let's make the square bracket so we know what index we're on with the D inside there and then the value which is a string so a percentage S contained inside that argument so we'll have an index for the D and then we'll have our argv array with the value at index that we want to print as the string and believe it or not that's all there is to it just to print the arguments out sent to the program to the screen the last thing I'm going to do is put a couple of new lines in here so that things are actually a little bit uh, easier to read so I'll save that and just very quickly off screen as usual now so I don't embarrass myself thoroughly is just compile it's compiled so I can safely bring the terminal over you can see there's the line there where I've just compiled the program and now oops that's from preparation earlier sorry about that but if I just run the program in its pure manner like this you'll see that we've got one argument and that argument at index naught is the dot forward slash ch51 which was the execution command for the program if you're running this on windows you would just see the ch51 because you would have run this without the dot and the forward slash so what would we do with this kind of thing then well if you think about it, this is very, very useful, particularly when you're, say, say you're building a program and you want to have a test mode or maybe a debug mode and a non-debug mode. Maybe in debug mode you, you print a lot of things out to the screen. Well, if I just take this, uh, no, I'll copy a bit of that in a minute, but let's say that I could say then, okay, if, and now I could say that arg value at in uh, the current index is what I want, but I want, first of all, a function there. So let's do strn cmp, so our string compare for a specific number. And we're going to be using our current string in our list of arguments. We'll say the string we're looking for, so we're going to look for debug. And then we're going to obviously count 
match for all five characters here. So if that is equal to naught, so you'll remember that it's equal to naught if it's successful from a long time ago in the videos, then what we can do is we can say, say something like, okay, program debug mode, like so. And I'll put a little new line. I haven't, can't, can never remember where the, 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 the backslash is on this new keyboard. So I'm going to copy and paste that in. Um, okay, so I've got program debug mode. Otherwise, we can, and let's put the main actually there as well. So that's a little bit more legible. Otherwise, let's do, and I'll just copy the post hit. Post hit. Now, now the code here, sorry. Now, let's see, another thing you often might want to do with the program is you might want to read in a file of data. So, for example, of my chess program, when I've often run tests on databases, I've told it which file to read in, and then I've often used um, a signal like debug, but another word for the mode I want, and it would know it's in that mode, and then I would also specify another argument for the file. So you could say, okay, if we see a dash file, then the next argument in the command line will be the file name. So we could program, we'll say read file name, and then let's print it to a string. Now, of course, the file name will be one, two, three, four, five, only five characters. Yet the file name will be the next argument, obviously, in the list because it should follow the dash file. So what I'll do here is index plus one. Now, to some of you, that will jump out straight away as, oh my goodness, that's with no error checking there. And of course, what you would normally do in here is say something like, if um, index is uh, plus one is greater than or equal to the argument count, then there's no file actually being submitted in here. No arguments come after the file, so you would print an error here and not try to read nothing out of this array. So you must make sure, as always, uh, if you do things like this index plus one, that you're not exceeding the bounds of the argv array. But assuming you're not, then, and you put the command line arguments incorrectly, then this will be the file name. So I'll just take out this line or comment out this line then here, just so we don't have too many printfs printing out. And then let me just bring, or not bring yet, I'll just compile this outside. And of course, I've made an error here because I'm doing this all live. Where have I made the error? It says I've made the error on line. Hmm. Where are we? Sorry, let me bring this over so I can see it. On line 14, expected semicolon after the expression. Did I forget a bracket or something? If string can't file. Ah, I've forgotten if, sorry, here. Okay, it compiles now. So I'll just bring it back across here then and type clear. And let's just run the program again. And it hasn't seen anything because I haven't given any arguments. So now I'll give it some arguments. So I'll give it the argument debug. And then I'll give it a dash file. And now let's just say readme dot like so. And now you can see that it's seen that the program's going in debug mode because we specified debug and we've said that we need to read in the file readme.txt. And interestingly, it doesn't obviously matter what order you read that you put these command line things in, just so long as they follow the specification that you want. So you could say dash to file readme.txt and then afterwards you could uh, put a space and then uh, debug, whoops, like so. And the result will be exactly the same. It's found that it needs to read this file in, and it's also found that it needs to be put in debug mode. And like I said, the only thing that can get tricky with these is the checking. So obviously, if you're told to read in a file, you should take the next argument if there is one. First, check that. And secondly, check that this file actually exists and various things like that. Um, but that all depends on the specification you write. So that's well, a slightly longer video than I thought it was going to be, but that's it then for this video. And hopefully that's a fairly easy to understand explanation of how you use command line arguments in your program. And they're extremely useful because they allow you to be very flexible and specify various different modes and things for running your program. So thanks very much for listening and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube or indeed via Google Plus because no one's allowed to comment anymore unless they've got a Google Plus account.